Combining a knit upper with full length boost cushioning, Adidas has revamped the Pure Boost in 2017 to create a silhouette that functions well for both running and casual use. This new pair takes the Oreo colorway from January and switches things up with a blacked out midsole. Let's take a look. Hey all, what is up? Reese here. I've got a brand new sneaker pickup to show you. What we're looking at today is the Adidas Pure Boost Limited in core black and running white. These released on April 26, 2017 with a retail price of $160. Now as we're going through this video, I'd love for you to leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this sneaker. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on both the silhouette in general and also this particular colorway. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And finally, if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Unlike the original Adidas Pure Boost, which released in 2014, or the second generation, the Pure Boost 2, that released in 2015, which were both kind of intended as casual everyday shoes, the 2017 version of the Pure Boost was actually built as a legitimate running shoe, although it definitely has a lot of casual appeal as well. We'll dive right into some of the kind of key features of the updated Pure Boost for 2017. Kicking things off with the upper, these feature a knit upper, which means it's not prime knit. It's pretty similar, but it's more of just like a traditional yarn that's woven together. So you don't get quite the same like stretchiness that we see with prime knit, but overall, especially when you're wearing them, the feeling is very similar. You still get that sock like fit. It's still very responsive and kind of moves well with your foot. So honestly, that's not a big deal as long as it is that knit upper. Another interesting feature is so this is a one piece upper, but the tongue is actually kind of, it has this weird like burrito fold where it folds in on itself like three times. So you've got a lot of extra material at the kind of tongue right up by the collar. And the point of that is to make a more natural system for adapting to different foot sizes. So if you have a wider foot or just kind of a bigger foot, you can kind of spread that material out a little bit and still be able to lace the shoe up kind of naturally and not just be forcing it into kind of weird positions. Moving to the midsole now, these do feature full length boost cushioning. It's maybe a tiny bit firmer than something like the Ultra Boost, but it's honestly pretty close, especially when you consider the fact that these don't have an insole while the Ultra Boost does. I know the insole doesn't affect that much, but it does make it feel just a little bit different when you're wearing them on feet. So that is just something to note. Another interesting thing about the cushioning setup is that it's a lot wider up at the forefoot. We'll be able to see this a little bit better in the close-up view, but basically it juts out a lot from the footbed on both the lateral and the medial sides, providing more of a wide base that will help with stability, especially when making turns and things like that. As far as sizing is concerned, I did go true to size on these. I think you could size down half a size if you wanted more of a snug fit. But if you're a wider foot or you just want a little more room like I did, going true to size is definitely a safe bet. Now, just because the base of the shoe where it kind of juts out is wider, doesn't mean that this shoe is crazy wide compared to something like the Ultra Boost, but the fact that you have that kind of expandable tongue area and no cage that really kind of contains the foot, these will work a little bit better for people with wide feet. Now there are three versions of the Pure Boost that we've seen so far in 2017. There's just the regular Pure Boost, which retails for $140. Then there's the Pure Boost Clima, which features Adidas's Clima Cool technology to basically help your feet stay cooler in hot weather. Those retail for either $130 or $140, depending on which colorway you choose. And finally, there's the Pure Boost Limited, which is what these are, which retail for $160. Now the only difference that I can tell from the limited to the regular Pure Boost is just the fact that the limited colorways have painted or colored boosts. There's like this pair, there's the blacked out pair, there's the pair with the silver boost. And to be honest, $20 is a lot to spend just to get colored boosts. I wasn't really excited about that idea until I saw this colorway. I think this is a great use of the black boost midsole. It's actually very similar to the first colorway the release of the 2017 Pure Boost. Back in January, you had an Oreo colorway release, but those were just the $140 price point, so those featured the regular white Boost with a black outsole. There's something that I just love about the contrast of the black with the white and black upper, and I just think this is a really, really well-executed colorway, and I was glad to pick up a pair. 
Now with all that said, we'll dive into the close-up view and take a look at the colors, materials, and everything going on with this sneaker. Kicking things off with a look at the box, we've got the same box we see with something like the Ultra Boost. You got your Boost branding along the side. Right there is your size and information tag. Along with the shoes in the box, you do get an extra set of laces that are flat compared to the rope laces that come on the shoe. In this case, it's just a black and white lace. Taking a look at the shoe itself now, again, these feature a knit upper that is not prime knit. If we get up close, you can kind of see a little more detail about the pattern. It's all just black and white. And like a lot of the knit patterns we've seen on Adidas shoes in like the past year or so that have an interesting pattern, this is inspired by something called Aramis motion capture. It's something that Adidas engineers have used to basically capture the strain and the movement of the human foot as it's running. It's how they've kind of developed the Adidas Alpha Bounce. It's how they develop the prime net pattern for the Ultra Boost 3.0 and it also helps kind of create some of these cool visuals that we see in this knit pattern and so it's just kind of cool that they've been able to translate it both for kind of like the technology use but then also into the visual side of things along the side of the shoe here you've got your three stripes just dyed on in black because there's no cage or anything like that here at the heel you've got this external heel counter it's kind of like an interesting rubbery plastic that sticks out quite a bit. It's got perforations. You've got one on both the lateral and the medial sides. You can see there's no three stripes there on the medial side. If we get up close now with the eyelets, you've basically just got these fabric strips coming through for the eyelets all the way up. White and black rope laces. I really like how these look. At the top of the tongue, it's kind of hard to see, especially with this colorway, but you do have your three stripes logo right there. Take a look now at this kind of interesting tongue. You can see the kind of different layers right there. It definitely looks kind of weird and you would think there would be a lot of material that would get kind of annoying when you're wearing them. You actually don't really notice it when you're wearing them. It can make them a little tougher to put on. You can't just really slip them on because this material will kind of get caught up under your foot sometimes. But once you've got them on, it really feels like any other shoe, which is definitely nice and I wasn't exactly expecting. You got black stitching right around the collar. Taking a look Inside of the shoe now, you've got some decent padding right there at the heel. There is no insole, so you can see you basically just got a thin layer of material with some gaps cut out where you can actually see the boost material. Pure boost branding right there on the insole as well. Taking a look at the midsole now, you've got that boost done up in black. And now this is like a paint or a coating, obviously, because as we see the boost in there, it's white. It's not like the entire chunk of boost is actually black. I'll be curious to see if this chips off at all. I'm hoping it doesn't, um, but with, you know, depending on what type of coating, that definitely could be a problem down the line. As I mentioned, these are a little more firm than something like the Ultra Boost, but it's not really enough that you would ever care that much. As you can see here, this is a good look at how wide this boost kind of juts out from the footbed right there and a little bit on the medial side as well. It really helps give you a nice wide base when you're running, especially when you're turning and things like that. Flipping to the outsole now, you've got an entirely white outsole. So you can see you've got a bunch of gaps where you can see the boost. And then you've got white rubber forming the kind of the, the actual outsole. Now this is not continental rubber. There's no continental branding here, but it's a lot thicker than what we saw in like the original Ultra Boost. So it still should be fairly durable or at least take longer to wear down. You can see, especially at the heel, you've got a lot more thickness than you do up here. Now this is a very similar outsole in terms of construction to the Ultra Boost. You've got kind of all of those gaps where you can see the boost and kind of these circular sections. And basically the idea is, so this is called stretch web technology. And the idea is that it really allows your foot to kind of flex and move naturally and it will adapt to that. One interesting thing too is there's a bit of arch support over here where you can see that the outsole actually wraps up into the arch and then you do see a little bit more of that black boost right through there. That'll wrap it up for the review of the Adidas Pure Boost Limited. If you haven't already, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this sneaker, this particular colorway down below. But with all that said, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.